it looks like Belular may have figured out how the war within is going to end. This is an Azeroth ending threat, as he says. Let's see what Bell has to say about this. Okay. This caught my attention when I first saw it in Blizzard Press Kit. At first glance, it does look like just another WoW enemy. Some fella will melt for a quest and never think about again. Yeah. This time, though, it could not be further from that, because we have seen NPCs like this before. If you played Season 3 of Dragonflight, you've seen them in your dungeon pool. Yeah. And if you I played Warlords of Draenor, you certainly will know what's going on. So... From Wad to the Everbloom to Chronicle to BFA to Dragonflight, a story is building, and here Blizzard are putting their foot on the accelerator. And other than the screenshot, the only War Within spoiler is the presence of a rather fibrous environmental detail in like two zones. And of course, today's sponsor. Incogni, where oh. I've got an update for you. So data oh, leaks happen all the time and like vultures looking for a meal data brokers are out there to harvest your data and that's why we end up dealing with so much spam and well sometimes worse but the good news is we've got a legal right to get that removed but the downside is that can take hours and as an attorney i will say you do have a legal right bellular you warcraft do. come in they automate the process for you and code bellular warcraft gets you 60 percent off the annual plan now I signed up a few months ago. Immediately, they found me in 48 brokers, they sent 42 requests, and six were completed instantly. I checked in on them today, though, just before recording this. They have now sent 44, six are in progress, and nice. 38 okay. have been taken it down. Works. Yes, 38. And the most recent one is called Crosswalk Technologies. I went to their site, and I got this quote, dynamically monitors the digital behavior of over 100 million consumers worldwide, which, uh, I don't want to be in that list. Kind of That's not good. And uh, now I'm not on that list. And by keeping you off those lists, your data is more safe, you are more secure, and you get fewer annoyances like spam mail, calls, and emails. That's right. And also, like, you know... Now Moishi can hide his bestiality sites. Be person Fantastic. tracking things, like being verified. Yeah, it helps get you off those too. Now, a problem is even if you do all these takedown requests yourself, you can just be re-harvested again. Incogni keeps your data down by re-scanning brokers over time. It does that all automatically. So give them a shot today at incogni.com. There it is. Slash Valular Warcraft code. Valular Warcraft. Use this code. Exclusive 60% discount. <laughs> okay, first things first. What is the thing that set this whole video off? This is a genosaur, something that you'll remember from Warlords of Draenor. Now, Warlords of Draenor was, of course, an alternate timeline, one where the genosaurs were still a threat, unlike in our timeline, where they very much appear to have been just killed off, driven extinct, or whatever. They weren't there in Warcraft 1. War of Draenor, like any alt timeline story though, is showing us a threat that we narrowly avoided. Only, of course, for the Everbloom dungeon to suddenly make that threat very, very real indeed. If you think about it, the wild thing about this dungeon is they were very close. I mean, look how close, they were right there at Stormwind. He was about to cast his shit and we finally stopped him. But uh, this dungeon, in terms of threats to uh, Stormwind, this came closer than almost anything did. The only thing that got closer was Deathwing actually crashing on the shore. So that's our first bit of context, that so we've seen this kind of enemy before, and he was tied to a pretty big threat. The second is our zones. The Earthen of Khazalgar were basically set up to protect and maintain the Coraway, which essentially is Titan stuff related to Azeroth that we don't fully understand yet. Right. One sect of them lives in the city of Dornagal, while the others, called Machine Speakers, reside in the Ringing Deeps, the same zone that we see our Genosaur in. Now, these machine speakers are supposed to be down there just keeping all the Titan machines running. TLDR, they uh, basically do mechanic things and maybe they're a bit sus. But the point is, it's odd that we see a Genosaur here, because the only other place we've seen one is Warlords of Draenor. I didn't even now, consider this. Of course, I'd like you to think of how, say, the roots of a tree can easily crack a pavement. Well... Warcraft takes its plant-caused destruction to a whole new level, in this case, a whole new level of sentience and threat. So, to understand why this genosaur appearing in the War Within actually matters, we've got to talk about the almost complete destruction of Draenor. And damn, these guys almost destroyed Draenor. I didn't realize these guys had this much lore behind them. They sound like tech priests from 40k. Yeah, the Earthen, yeah, they, that's basically what they are. I mean, the Titans created them just to be like maintenance people on the machine. And they really didn't have too much of a conscience or free will. You know that most people in WoW or most races in WoW got their free will when the curse of the flesh happened and all that stuff. 
But uh, in terms of these guys, they were still just, you know, doing their mindless, you know, maintenance of the Titan machines until the sword from Sargeras crashed into the planet. And then it seems like Azeroth, through speaking to them or something, may have kind of woken them up and given them free will, and that's why now they're joining our side and everything. But uh, I, I don't know who priests are and tech priests are in 40K, but yeah, maybe they're kind of the same. But these plant boys, I didn't realize they were this much of a threat. I always just kind of killed them and didn't even think about it. It's crazy. What up, boy? Good morning, baby What Jay. I'm covering here is the deep backstory of Draenor. And yes, while it does, of course, pertain to the Warlords of Draenor expansion, which was alt timeline, this stuff also is canonical for the main timeline. Like, we even know that because it's directly tied to Orcish genealogy. So let's get into the lore. During Warlords of Draenor, we met a group called the Batani, these plant people who seem to serve a bunch of genosaurs, like this one that was a world boss. To many people, you just kill them, didn't think about it, and right. that's basically that. What I'm going to do today, though, is to give you the abridged version of that entire story. So on Azeroth, the world soul consumed the element of spirit, and that led to Azeroth's elements being in unbalance and likely sort of harming life. On Draenor, though, there was no world soul. The world was saturated with elemental spirit energy, and so nature thrived. But it was less a serene garden or a park, as you or I would imagine, and far more just pure Darwinism. Rich, Wait. vibrant, absurdly dangerous, and a little Wait, bit... Draenor had no world soul? I didn't even know that was possible. It said, there's no world... I guess not every world has a world soul. I don't know why I assumed that they do. So there's just a, nature running amok. Bit primed for yeah, do. What happens then when a creature becomes so dominant that not only does it consume all of its prey, but it also destroys its whole ecosystem? If you add in a dash of scale and a dash of fantasy, you basically have the deep past of Draenor. So, as I said, saturated with spirit, full of life, and a species of plant known as a spore mound eventually became sentient. It became hive-minded and very dominant. Essentially, imagine creeping vines with the spreadability of mold and the ferociousness of the flood from the Halo universe. Oh, now, shit. These spore mounds dominated the planet, and by the time Agrimar, one of the Titans, came upon Draenor, the situation was dire, and he basically realized the world was doomed. So he decided to deal with this spore mound problem by creating a counterbalance in the form of Grond, a colossal elemental giant. I mean, just look at this art Damn. from Warcraft Chronicle. It sells the scale better than any of my words could. Grond fought well. Grond destroyed two of the spore mounds, but unfortunately was bested by the final one, Batan. Remember the Batani from earlier? Yeah, they uh, they like Batan. Anyway, this is really cool lore. Stuff, because while Grond was defeated, its body fractured into smaller, but still giant beings called Colossals. They continued the fight and eventually they ended up ah. sacrificing themselves to destroy Spore Mound Batan. That's what these skeletons are out in Draenor? What? Okay, that is your big deep ancient lore. The descendants of these groups though would go on to fight for millennia. I mean, hell, the life spores that kind of were floating about the place after Batan was destroyed, those made their way into our rocky friends and turned our rocky friends a little bit fleshy. And that is actually what led to Ogron and to Ogres. And Holy to the shit, this is how the Ogres and the Orcs and everything were born? I have no, I had no idea about this lore. What the heck? ...of the Mokhnathal and eventually to Orcs, who, I mean, somewhat paralleling Warcraft's humans, descended from sort of rock giant things of a titan making. Moving swiftly on though, during the Warlords of Draenor expansion, we ended up fighting both sides. The Iron Horde were aligned with the big rocky ogre dudes and the Batani, who essentially just wanted to make more genosaurs and eventually, uh, yeah, get a full spore mound on the go. Well, we fought them as well. We even caught them making a genosaur out of humanoid flesh. Which is a bit Damn. disconcerting. Now, this got really bad by the time we entered the Everbloom dungeon, because there, the spores had infested the Kirin Tor expedition group, and the situation got so bad that the leading genosaur ended up making it to Stormwind. We put right. a stop to it, but if we didn't, it would have been bad. Those spores would have infected the locals, more Botani. Uh, so his spores were infecting humans, so he was about to turn all of Stormwind into basically spore zombies. 
I, I didn't even know what he was trying to do up there. I just killed him would every have time. Poured through the portal. Fallen human Shit. flesh would have been twisted to create new genosaurs. Imagine The Last of Us, but with hive mind plant people making hive mind plant and flesh. So these guys are made of plants and flesh. That's why they look the way they do. I, I, damn, I had no idea this was. How, so he was going to make more guys that look like him and basically create this giant plant army that was going to infect into. They would have been like the scourge of plants. Probably would have been bad. Might have been an okay expansion. Good thing though. we stopped. Yeah. Anyway, by now, you might be able to see how things are falling into place. The Warlords of Draenor Dungeon Everbloom is the gameplay manifestation of this whole story. And even though it is from Warlords of Draenor, we are seeing creatures from it in the War Within. Right. And to put the cherry on top, the Everbloom Dungeon the flood, is yeah. part of the Dragonflight Season 3 Mythic Plus rotation. That's called foreshadowing, everybody. But that's not it for today's video. There are two whole other things at play. One is Blizzard setting up lore. The other one is them making a point via gameplay. The take a look Luna at here. this. This is an image from the press kit. Yeah. Um, now, take a look at this. This we're not supposed to have, but a member of the community forwarded it to me, and, um, well, it confirmed a theory that I was talking about on stream. And what you can see here is that in the intersection of the Ringing Deeps and Ajkahet, we have big green swirly roots. Roots right. of what? What are they? Why are there roots there? Well, we have access to the area above it, the Isle of Dorne, and if you fly around, you will see no such tree worthy of those roots. And is this the remnants of an old does matter. Tree? Because I expected to find big roots there with no tree to match. So let me explain. We are just back from a trip to the Emerald Dream. That was the final raid of the Dragonflight expansion. And when we were in the Emerald Dream, we came upon this story, The Legend of Elune Ahir. It's right. this actually lovely little tale um, about an effort that yep, Aeon... Ammon Thule ripped it out, A&R planted it, Ammon, that's right. ...are made to this. mend Azeroth. When the Titans found Azeroth, it was covered in this old god goop. They were deeply just infested all over the place, right? The world soul was in a really bad state. Now... It turned out that Elun had gifted Aenar a branch of Gahanir, the mother tree. That's basically the mother of all trees in the Emerald Dream. And if you rolled a druid in the Legion expansion, you might recognize that name because your artifact weapon was also a branch of that tree. So oh, cool. Aenar goes and she plants that tree. The tree takes and she calls this new tree Elun Ahir. She desperately, of course, wants to save Azeroth. Remember, the Titans view Azeroth as the ultimate being of their kind and one of such power that like, she's just key to their victory. If they get right. Azeroth, they win and it's all going to be okay. So to them, this is of unbelievable importance. So A&R probably thought if the energies of the Mother Tree would help Azeroth and fight the old god Goop, great! But Amon Thul, leader of the Titan Pantheon, did he, he not think snapped. so. His voice bellowed, This is not order. You have infected this world with uncontrolled chaos. He then reaches down from the sky and rips the tree out of the world, destroying it. And at this, Aenar was distraught. Her yeah, tear... she cries a lot. It's a, it's a big moment. Look at this. I never even noticed her animate, her uh, character thing here. She's got roots growing on her arms. That's an interesting... She fell to the earth. Piece of armor. Unexpectedly... Her tears nourished the remaining roots. And so Aenar was obviously quite frustrated with Amanthul over this, uh, but, but she was a little pleased because even though he did rip the tree out, the roots were still there and she felt that those roots would still have a positive impact. So the roots were nursed. Somehow they didn't die. Yeah, uh, also the old gods kind of know about the roots. You guys, you guys remember one of Nizath's wh whispers? Deeper, deeper, its roots will, will grow. Uh, I mean, we're dealing with a bunch of roots here. So I'm wondering now, is this uh, is this part of the plan? Do the old gods already know something about these roots that we don't? And even though it's not all that she wanted, Aenar was pleased by this, and she, of course, decided not to tell Amonthul. Of course, after this point, the Titans leave, never to return again. You know, brackets, until the Legion expansion. Now, are the roots that we see in the War Within the same roots as Aluna here. Obviously, I, I don't know be. yet. Does it seem likely, though? 
I would say yes. Blizzard set this up in Dragonflight's final major patch, and now they are beginning to pay it off. This is a piece of lore that pulls in established events since Warlords of Draenor, and the story is centered around Amonthul being angry yeah, I mean, the timing, Anor, meaning the timing it of it all plays. Uh, makes sense too, right? Like, it, why would they introduce this at the end of this expansion for no reason? Oh, they're reintroducing us to a story, and now we're getting to see a bunch of roots underground. And our meaning it also plays to the Titan intrigue that is driving the World Soul Saga. So all of these things fit together, right? But the background lore of Dranor and the Everbloom Dungeon are not our most recent driving home of this threat. Not our most overt one, anyway. For that. We must peer into the timeways. Underoth. Welcome to Ulderoth. Ulderoth. It's a mighty alternative future where the Titans are victorious. And if you look around, it's a bit weird. <laughs> we briefly hopped over here during patch 10.1.5's Time Rift event. Oh yeah, And we did. when you go there, it's not what you would expect. Because rather than some grand ordered utopia, we see untamed wilds all over the place. And curse or adore me, this is a timeline where the titans win, where there are no old gods or void lords or any of those things. So that the titans win, yet the whole place is overgrown. And yeah, looks... interesting that the t this is considered a titans win, and yet there's plants everywhere. I feel like Ammon Thule would hate this. He wouldn't consider kinda it a win. Kind of destroyed. Doesn't make any sense. But the good news is we do find a hologram. And when you click through the readout of it, we essentially learn that Azeroth is a dangerous land and that the local Yangol only live as long as they do because they hide in caves. And that the Damn. watchers that are constructed basically get destroyed in no time. And ultimately, the conclusion of what we read is that they need to start making smaller and smaller and smaller watchers so that the watchers are able to hide from the local wildlife and that this information must be passed on to other watcher communities Shit. if communication can be reestablished. Now, that's quite bad. I mean, everything is the being... Plant, the, the, the planet's so overrun by plants that anything that's living just gets destroyed instantly. Any of the watchers at the tides... Wow. Wow. I didn't, what, how did I not know any of this? Destroyed, and the Watchers, which are beings that in our time were able to best the forces of the old gods, they're isolated. That they're isolated shows a complete collapse in Titan operations on the world. Now, an Azeroth, where not even the Titans can Sup, crazy? get shit done. Does, does that remind you of anything? Does that remind you of a world that is moving in the same direction as ancient Draenor? I mean, it True. does basically it does sound like, like the it. sort of world that existed before Agrimar created uh, Grond to save it. Now, of course, we don't know how Ulderoth came to pass. We don't know if maybe the roots grew and that's how Ulderoth happened or something else happened, right? It's just an alternative timeline that's Blizzard having fun, but also giving us a little bit of a wink and a nudge with their lore. What is clear, though, could it be a timeline where Amonthul either died or doesn't exist or something is the lesson, beware uncontrolled life. It almost ended the world of Draenor. The point there is that if Agrimar didn't stop the Spore Mounds, they would have consumed the whole planet and then presumably, with nothing else to really feed on, sort of kaput or some form of collapse. And then in Warlords of Draenor, well, we almost let the Everbloom spread to Stormwind, which could right. have been a civilization ending event. In Battle for Azeroth, a group of Batani actually escaped with the Maghar Orcs and uh, they just kind of booked it to the Barrens. In Dragonflight, we learned of Ulderoth. We learned of the roots of Elune Ahir. And now in The War Within, we see all of these elements brought together where we have roots near the world soul and we have Genosaurs. I do not think that this is the A-plot of this expansion, but mark my words, something is up. And uh, given something the edicts it. of the Prime Designate and all the things that we've learned about today, just take a look at this bit of card art from one of Hearthstone's most recent uh, expansions. It's called <laughs> Strike from History, and the image is just Amonthul battling. Look at that, he's just destroying a bunch of roots. He's literally blasting them away. A giant green vine. I mean, I know it's Hearthstone, it ain't canon, but that's a wink and a nudge. 
Yeah. So what do you think is up? I just couldn't help but notice here a foothold of life that looked like something that in Warlords of Draenor was canonically extremely dangerous. And I noticed that at the same time, as I also can't help but notice that there's a big light crystal in Hallowfall, and how all of this is happening just off the west coast of Pandaria, which is all near the Titan's most secret machinery built around the world soul itself. And if you would like to follow a similar thread, check out this video next, because if you do, you won't see the Tomb of Sir Garrus in the same way again. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you over there. Interesting. Yeah, the, uh, I had no idea these plant people were this vicious, but I guess that they are, and the whole roots thing, for sure. There is lore implications behind it. The old gods themselves, Nazath himself has whispered about roots many times. Amonthul's history with the roots and everything, ripping them out. There's definitely something behind it all. We'll have to wait and see how it all relates in the end. And always use another death Mikey night. Bodo, thank you so much for the four months. And Malden Bruski, thank you for the 14, by the way. I missed that one in the intro. Thank you, thank you so much, guys. I do appreciate it. Death Knights of our Scourge. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see what it all means.